So back in World War II, some Polish troops were walking through the forest when they discovered a bear. And did they do what us Westerners are trained to do and curl into a ball and cry? No, because apparently the Polish are a different breed. Instead, the commander decided to adopt the bear after he, quote, discovered what a calming influence it had over his men. I don't know if you've ever been within 10 feet of a grizzly, but the word I would use to describe it is less calming and more absolutely terrifying. Well, apparently this bear was a bro, and he smoked cigarettes, drank beer, and wrestled with the men. Keep in mind, the average grizzly bear is 600 pounds of teeth, claws, and muscle. During battles, this guy would literally carry ammo around and was known to reload guns. What a goddamn legend. Want to hear about the coolest pig of all time? So there was this pig, right? And she was adopted by a squad of sailors on a German battleship called the Dresden in World War I. The soldiers loved her, and she just kind of chilled on or below deck. They went through a lot together. A victory at the insane Battle of Colonel, and a tactical retreat at the Battle of Falcon Islands. She was a great, loyal pig, but given that her fellow sailors were literal Nazis, when they had to sink the ship, they left her on board like monsters. She jumped ship and floated around for an hour, until a passing officer on another ship dove in and rescued her. She lived a happy life for 20 years until she died of old age. <laughs> Just kidding, she was auctioned off for pork and her head got sold to the British. Our third animal is not one normally associated with the traumas and violence of war. It's better recognized for fluttering around aimlessly, pooping, and being a government drone. I'm talking, of course, about the humble pigeon. When you or I see a pigeon, we see a little bird that kind of hangs out. When the US government sees them, they see potential. Specifically this one guy, B.F. Skinner. Skinner was a behaviorist, and little fun fact, he was the guy that popularized the time out. You know, the thing you do to your kid when they destroy your 47-inch flat screen TV. Fair to say, he wasn't the coolest guy, but he did have some wacky ideas. In this case, that idea was to use pigeons as a bomb guidance system. The premise was, you would have a bomb with a glider attached to it, and pigeon inside. The pigeon would be looking at a screen with a target on it. The pigeon would peck the target, and the bomb would move left or right, depending on where the pigeon pecked. These pigeon-powered projectiles saw a grand total of zero uses due to the rise of electronic guidance systems. Every pigeon in the program can breathe a sigh of relief. Speaking of segues, allow me to introduce you to Unsinkable Sam. The 20th century didn't have much success with unsinkable things, and Sam was no exception. He was first owned by the captain of the German battleship Bismarck, and grew to be quickly beloved by the team. They set sail on their first mission, Operation Rundbug, in 1941, and got blown up during the battle. Only 5% of the crew survived. Luckily, our boy Sam was amongst them. He survived by floating on a board for several hours, until a British destroyer called the HMS Cossack found and rescued him. He served on the Cossack for several months, but soon his time came again and the ship was blown up by a torpedo. Fortunately, Sam managed to survive and was brought to shore in Gibraltar. From there, he was brought onto yet another ship, and can you guess what happened? Following that, he was transferred to the HMS Ark Royal, a full aircraft carrier, which was again torpedoed by a U-boat. The survivors described him as angry, but quite unharmed. And I mean, fair enough. At this point, the Navy began to get the message, and finally, Sam was retired to a seaman's home in Belfast, where he lived out the rest of his years. But my favorite cat story from the 20th century is definitely that of Acoustic Kitty. Back in the 60s, tensions between the US and Soviet Union were high. There was a ton of espionage and secrecy going on, and each side wanted desperately to be better at eavesdropping than the other. The US would do anything to gain information on the Soviets, and they had some wacky ideas. In this case, a plan was developed to basically turn a cat into a living microphone. This Wikipedia was so dang ominous. Listen to this. Due to problems with distraction, the cat's sense of hunger had to be addressed in another operation. What does that mean? Did they remove its stomach? Detach its esophagus? Give it a burger? We'll never know. The assignment was given to the CIA, and 20 million dollars later, the acoustic kitty was ready for action. Equipped with a radio transmitter in its skull and a wire in its fur, this thing was state of the art. They released it to eavesdrop on two Soviet men sitting by the US Embassy in Washington, and as it crossed the street, it was hit by a taxi. Next item! You know that moment when, as a child, you decided to throw rocks at a beehive and it fell down and exploded into 40 million bees? 
Well, picture that, but instead of a beehive, it's a giant metal tube. And instead of bees, it's hundreds and hundreds of bats carrying a teensy, teensy bit of napalm. This was the U.S.'s idea for how to deal with Japan in World War II. Basically, they harvested a bunch of bats, strapped tiny firebombs to them, and planned to drop these giant bombs over Japan, where the bats would find random Japanese houses and then spontaneously combust. In a brick-and-mortar world of America, this may not be very effective, but in Japan, houses are like 90% paper, so... That's all I got. Subscribe if you learned something.